Lindsay Johnson, and I'm the fossil preparator here at the Museum of Geology. Welcome to my lab, and happy Neutrino Day. You are probably wondering what a fossil preparator is, right? Really, what are we? What do we do? Well, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to tell you about fossil preparation and show you some of the tools of the trade. But first, before I tell you about fossil preparation, we have to start way back when a fossil was first found in the field. When fossils are found in the field, paleontologists dig them up or excavate them. Next, they put a protective plaster jacket around the fossil with a toilet paper separator to protect the fossil from the plaster. They then flip over the jacket with the fossil inside. So it ends up looking something like this guy where you can see some of that rock and then you can also see some of the rib popping out. And then once they have this jacket secured, they'll take it into the lab from the field where it is received and prepared. And that's where I come in. The first tool we use is a dental pick. So I actually have a couple right here. They're just like what you would see in the dentist's office. And so we really use these to remove the soft rock or uh, reach hard places on the fossils we're working on. Next is paint brushes. Just like what you'd use if you're an artist or painting your house. So instead of using these to paint, I actually use these to clean off extra dirt from the fossil. These are called poofers, and they look just like little rubber duckies or toys that you'd have in your bathtub. So these guys actually have a hole in their mouth that when you squeeze on it, blows air out or a poof. So we actually use these to dust really delicate areas of our fossils instead of paintbrushes. Our next tool is the aerobrader. This one is kind of like a handheld sandblaster, but instead of sand, we actually use baking soda as our abrasive. It's much softer than sand and is less likely to harm your fossil. We use this tool for fine detail cleaning of the fossil. But be warned, if you use this tool incorrectly, it, you can completely destroy your specimen. Next are air stripes. So these puppies might look like dentist drills to you, but they're actually miniature jackhammers. So these guys are actually powered by compressed air, which causes the needle in the tip to vibrate, and you can use this to remove rock very quickly. They can also hurt your fossil, however, so you need to be very careful when using these tools. And just to show you what it sounds like when it's on, pretty cool. The last tool we're going to talk about is glue. This isn't your everyday Elmer's glue, however. This is a special glue called Paraloid B72 that is made by mixing tiny plastic beads and a solvent-like acetone together. It has a very stable chemical composition, which means it's going to last a very long time. This in turn means when you glue a bone, a bone together, the glue will hopefully keep it together just as long. Also, the really cool thing about Paraloid and other solution adhesives is that they're reversible. Because Paraloid is dissolved in acetone, it can be reworked or removed from your specimen quite easily by adding more acetone. This means if you mess up, you can redo your work. There are so many other tools we could talk about too, but if we talked about them all, we'd be here all day. So now that you know a little about the tools, let's talk more about what we do in the fossil preparation lab. Remember, the main goal is to reveal and stabilize the fossil. That means you have to remove all the rock using your tools while finding where the fossil is in your jacket and not damaging it at the same time. Sometimes we will choose to take the fossil out of the jacket, and sometimes we'll actually decide to leave it in there. It really depends on a ton of different factors like how stable the fossil is, the position of the bones in the jacket, and the stability of the jacket itself. It is up to me as the fossil preparator to decide what is best for the fossil. And every fossil is different, so we have to think critically. It's like solving a puzzle or a mystery. Fossil preparation is also a unique field. We don't only just use paleontology and geology in the lab, but we also use physics, biology, chemistry, and even artistic skills. You see, even though we're using science to reveal data for the fossils, 
You have to use a skill set or have the eye for detail in our work. A lot of preparators have an artistic background, which can be really useful in the lab. We work with our hands a lot, so having a natural or practiced talent can be a big advantage. And having a passion for fixing and creating things helps too. One example of using art in fossil preparation is jacket mapping or sketching your specimen. Taking notes and writing down everything you did to a fossil is really important, and so is drawing the original position of the bones in the field or in the, the lab. When you write something down or draw something, you are recording data or knowledge that can be used by researchers or scientists. Recording information is very, very important in any scientific field. Here are some examples of maps that we've created in the lab. Do you want to try to draw your own map of a fossil? It's pretty simple and you don't have to be a good artist to do this technique. Anyone can try it out. We use something called the grid method. We lay a grid over our specimen and then draw another grid on our piece of paper that matches the scale of our real life grid. In this case, we use a one meter by one meter grid and that means each of these squares is 10 by 10 centimeters. It takes a little math to create a grid on your piece of paper to match the real life grid, but having that grid on your piece of paper is going to make it a lot easier. Once your grid is in place, you can start drawing your specimen. Start with one of the corner grids and draw what you see in the grid. When that first grid is complete, move on to the next one. The process is going to continue until you have your own jacket map completely drawn out. Make sure you include a scale of your grid so others know what the true size of your real life grid is. If you'd like to try it for yourself, make sure you check out the link below for the activity. Happy Neutrino Day from the Museum of Geology! Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button.